again viewers welcome back again today we're going to be doing what's basically part two of the uh, brake job on the 2007 Chevy Trailblazer on uh, the last one we did the back brakes and adjusted the parking brake this one here we're just going to go through the front brakes uh, just pads and rotors clean up the the, the, uh, the guide pins uh, inspect that's pretty much this is the same one by the way that uh, a while back we did ball joints and control arms and tie rod ends so we're gonna check all of that stuff and look around while we're in there Bit of inner, play on the inner tie rod end. That side on here looks good. Get a look see around the other side. Yep, everything over here looks good. And it just started raining, so we're going to cut this one short. advances in modern technology you can just take a look at the weather and it's going right by so we'll just wait this one out so you got 13 millimeter on the caliper and 18 millimeter on the bracket Loosen up the caliper bolts first. Another breaker bar for the 18 millimeters. We're going to crack those loose too. by hand. Yep. That one turns by hand now. That one turns by hand. And these, I'll take these out. Let me go I'll grab my pet trainer. for the new record. How many brake jobs can we do with one pet trainer? Let's see. 
lug nuts down there. And go ahead and take the caliper screws out, caliper bolts. So we're gonna push the pistons back just a little bit. Get this thing, uh, get this caliper off of here, see what we got going on on the inside. side back a little bit too. There we go. Now go grab my hook. Alright. Take the caliper off. Take a look at the inside of it. Make sure there's no damage to any of the boots. They all look good. Go ahead and hang this up and out of the way. Go ahead and take the, both of the bottom bolts, both of the bracket bolts out. can't see me right now, the caliper's hanging in the way here. Get this bolt right here, get this out. Alright, pull off the bracket, pads, like evenly worn. The inboard slightly more worn than the outboard. There's a little bit more of the uh, wear indicator in the middle left on the outboard. There's still actually plenty of meat left on these, but he's got no one to put in it, so we're going to go ahead and do that, and this rotor's not going to come off without a fight. And then double check everything while we're in here. We already figured out that there's an issue with the inner tie rod end. But everything else here looks absolutely beautiful. It looks like it's going to be a little more grease, but... We're all set. Go ahead and get this rotor off. All right, we're gonna grab a couple of bolts, thread those in a little bit. Just give them a little couple. Well, that was easy enough. Not everything comes off that easy, but that's nice actually. Take these back out. Put them back in the toolbox. And there's our really nasty looking ro rotor. Get down here, get all of this cleaned up. backwards. Get it out of the plastic bag to some degree. This is coated in oil. And I mean coated. Yuck. It's got so much oil on it. Let me grab some paper towels. Like to do is you take the paper towel, fold it in quarters, 
spray down the paper towel. And then get a good wipe down both sides. Somebody's having fun with their toolbox. Two of the lug nuts for now, it'll help keep everything lined up. Now let's get to the bracket. Having some issues with the camera. I wouldn't be surprised if I drop a couple scenes here and there. Get these clips out. That one didn't want to come out. Grab the springy side of it and pull on that. This caliper bracket is pretty gross. I'm going to file these landings down, clean them up first. Down here with the file. Be careful with the boot. Yeah, we're gonna have to be extra careful. No, I'm just gonna take these out and play it safe. Now with this style, you gotta pull the pin out all the way. Then you can remove the boot. Same thing on the other side. Now let's see just before we do that. Which side are we on here? Okay, so the bottom side, follow the trailing edge is the side with the, uh, the rubber piece. It didn't even get completely coated. Good and cleaned off. We don't want any old grease on the outside of this, especially if it's petroleum. I'm not quite sure. This one feels like it's been soaked with something that softened up the rubber. We'll assemble that in a few minutes. Let's get to cleaning this up, and being that we've cleaned these out, let's try to not get anything in it by keeping them facing downward. It's looking pretty good. And same thing on the other side. Boy, this has got some scale on it. bit of pitting in there. Nothing all too major. There's still a little scaling over here. Trying to, trying to keep those openings facing down. on these landings keep them from rusting up again keep going back there keep forgetting to grab the new brake pads and the hardware Let's see how many clips we got in here one two three four 
Hey, no guessing on this side. And as far as I remember, there's no difference between top and bottom on these. These actually have these spring clips built into them that push the brake pads back outward. Get these uh, handy seized and bolted back in. I've got a brand new bottle of this already. I just haven't gotten around to putting it into use. I still got a lot left in the bottom of this. You do not really want a really thick coating of this on here because it will get squeezed out from underneath the hardware. You don't want it coming in contact with your rotor. Just a light coating of this. We'll go back and clean that up in a minute. Get the access off of it. But you do want to make sure that everything that the hardware is coming in contact with is coated. Alright, now that's all done. Get whatever's in the middle out of there. Go ahead and put your hardware in place. Probably not going to go down into all that easily. We'll see. down on. The other one. We'll start with squeezing this piece in here in the middle down in. Be careful you don't bend it. And then when you're done, that's what it looks like. So we're going to go ahead and bolt this back in place. I'll actually put my put the pins back in. Bottom the bottom part of the boot first. It's in all the way around. Same thing with the other one. And let's see. Bottom edge. That was this one here. I'm going to put a little bit more grease on this. Just a little. This one. Looks like we got another round of storms coming in.
looks like it's going to get really windy. Get this done. I'll get these brake pads on. Pull all four out. Squealer, no squealer, squealer, no squealer. Squealer goes inboard, leading edge. Inboard, leading edge. Outboard, no squealer. Clip in the edge of these that holds your brake pad in place. That's all there is to those. Now You got the double piston compressor. I showed you in the last video we got one of those we're going to be giving away. And put this right in there and pop. You don't have to be super level or super straight or anything like that, but I'm sure it probably does help. Push those pistons right back. all the way down. Squeeze this little tab to release it. Get the two out. Go ahead and set the caliper down. Pull the pins. Make sure that they're lined up and tucked in. back in. I'm go ahead and make sure everything is tight. Get your hook, get back there, make sure these bracket bolts are nice and tight. And go ahead and put your wheel back on. See if I can do something with that video later on. Because here comes the rain again. Well, this crap just sucks. It's pouring like crazy out here right now. Oh well, I'm back to it in a few minutes. The wingling weather. Camping out in the back of the blazer at the moment is the downpour. 
See that water right? <laughs> yeah. So, in any case, we'll be uh, getting right back to those brakes in a few minutes. Spray up the whole front end of the hub, including this edge right here. Some fluid film. A light coating of it. Put your rotor on. Make sure that you don't line up these holes with those holes. And then go ahead and put your bracket back on. And yeah, I uh, had to take the rotor back off. I forgot to put the fluid film on the hub. It's not critical, but yeah, I like to do that for people. So down the road, if they need to do anything, it's not a rusty mess. So we're basically just kicking back a little bit. Am I telling you this means I get to do a little bit less editing later on. But now, go ahead and tighten these bolts down. And here, tighten down the bracket bolt. And we'll put the caliper back in place. breaker bar is probably overkill with this so we're just not going to put a lot of pressure on it. Notice I'm not putting a lot of pressure into this. I'm just doing this with one hand. Breaker bar put a lot of torque on there. You break a bolt, strip a bolt, seize it right in there. moves around go ahead and put the wheel back on and even though we forgot stopping how to pull some stuff back apart and do a little editing and squeeze myself into the camera here go ahead and turn the wheel straight and go ahead and put the wheel back on by hand. And 
we'll use the impact to spin these down. Go ahead and lower the vehicle. Torque down your lug nuts. And put your center cap back on. In this case, we don't have the center caps. But uh, you won't be able to torque these until you get it on the ground. But uh, lower it down, torque them down. So if you guys found this one helpful, this is part two of the 2007 Chevy Blazer. The front brakes. Last episode we did the back brakes. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Go ahead and ring that bell for notifications for our up and coming videos. Don't forget I'll be giving, doing a giveaway pretty soon on that double piston caliper retraction tool. And uh, see you on the next one. Don't forget, you got no more excuses. Pick up those wrenches. Vehicle, put your hub. Well, just yeah.